It's not the first iPhone to be made in India, but it sure is the first iPhone to be made in India on day one. The iPhone 15's landmark achievement is a testament to Apple's growing manufacturing reliance on India, but also a growing appetite in the premium smartphone category. It's also a notable change in how Apple is approaching manufacturing in India. Now, the iPhone 14 series lagged behind Chinese manufacturing by as much as six to nine months. That gap has been reduced to day one local manufacturing in the case of the iPhone 15, with the iPhone 15 Plus to follow suit starting next month. But the first don't just end at manufacturing. The 15 is also the first USB-C enabled iPhone and is very close to the iPhone 14 Pro than you'd imagine. Now, unlike previous years, the iPhone 15 is perhaps the most monumental upgrade to the lineup. While USB-C is the highlight feature, Apple has also brought over additions like Dynamic Island, a higher resolution 48 megapixel camera, and even features like AI-enabled 2 x zoom to the phone. Performance is good thanks to the A16 Bionic chipset. Now, while Apple's focus on performance efficiency and excellent display and great optics continues in this case, some obvious cutbacks have also been made. For example, the iPhone 15's display remains vivid outdoors and indoors. It lacks ProMotion and as such, text and graphics can look a bit choppy moving around the animation-heavy iOS interface. The camera is almost the same setup as the 14 Pro of last year, which means you would get good quality images and videos. Most of the features on the iPhone 15 come from the 14 Pro model. So if you are now confused between the iPhone 15 and the 14 Pro, here is a quick comparison that will help you decide, especially now that there has been a price drop in the iPhone 14 Pro after the launch of the iPhone 15 series. Tackling the design first, the iPhone 15 and the 14 Pros front look remarkably similar and that's mostly because Apple has brought the Dynamic Island to the entire series for the first time ever. But if you look closely, there are differences to be found. For example, the iPhone 14 Pro screen is a lot more smoother at 120Hz and is capable of features like always-on display, standby mode, which the iPhone 15 can't. Those differences extend to the mid-frame where the iPhone 15 continues to use aluminium versus the higher quality and heftier stainless steel chassis of the iPhone 14 Pro. And of course, you can't discount the difference in the choice of colors with the iPhone 15 getting more vibrant options like this thing. Now internally, the gap is significantly lower. Both phones are powered by the same processor, A16 Bionic chipset, which means you can expect similar benchmark scores, gaming capabilities, and AI-enabled features. Now, what is new, of course, is the USB-C support on the iPhone 15, perhaps the strongest reason to consider one over the 14 Pro. The iPhone 15's USB-C connector supports USB 2.0 speeds, a range of external devices, and can even display the screen using USB to HDMI cables. And finally, there are the cameras. Now, the iPhone 15 gets the same primary 48 megapixel sensor as the 14 Pro. Now, there's the same ultra wide camera too, but if you like getting close to your subject, then the lack of a telephoto sensor on the iPhone 15 will come across as disappointing to you. So, there you go. All pieces of the iPhone 15 versus the 14 Pro puzzle are laid out. Does a better screen, a telephoto lens justify the extra 30,000 rupees gap between the two phones? Not quite, but come festival season, that gap will get a lot closer and our iPhone 15 versus the 14 Pro guys should help you make the right call.